What is up everyone it's Saber here and welcome to another Naruto What If. If you end up liking the video please consider subscribing, it's free and you can take it back at any time and it really helps me out and this is my third channel so if you want some more what ifs go check out my other channels. And with all of the YouTube formalities out of the way let's get into it. The clunk of wood clashing with wood rang out in the clearing as two Kunoichi clash Sakura made several rapid strikes with her bow staff right left above below only for Ten Ten to easily block each strike with her own the pink haired girl leaned to the side to avoid a retaliatory jab at her chest before ducking down as Ten Ten swept the weapon to the side she lashed out at Ten Ten's legs only for the brunette to leap over her attack flipping and spinning in the air to land on her feet Sakura. Immediately charged spinning to add momentum to her next attack as Ten Ten landed a sweeping blow aimed at her waist Ten Ten kicked back out of range Sakura brought her staff over her head and put all her strength into her next attack Ten Ten raised her staff and blocked Sakura's overhead attack with a final loud crack for a moment the two strained against each other before Ten Ten smiled pretty good considering you just started a few weeks ago Sakura smiled back thanks but Ten Ten spun to the side and bent her staff letting Sakura's weapon slip off and throw her off balance she then jabbed at Sakura's side before following up with a kick that sent her to the ground you've still got a long way to go friendly piece of advice. If you ever get into that weapon lock like that break it or back off ASAP it's way too easy to take advantage of Sakura sat up rubbing her side to ease the pain yeah I can see that she replied as Ten Ten walked over and offered her a hand and I think I got another valuable lesson from all this oh really what don't try to fight a walking arsenal with a weapon Sakura smiled as that got a chuckle out of 1010 meh it's not like close range combat is my specialty that would be more my teammate shticks 1010 said placing a hand on her hip fancy a trip to the hot spring I know I could stand to unwind after back to back training sessions Sakura looked up at the sky and guessed there might be three hours of daylight left 1010 was right after training all day with Kakashi and then a sparring match with Ten Ten all while her gear was weighing her down a soak would be nice sure and thanks for all the help that don't worry about it it's actually kind of refreshing to train with someone who isn't constantly screaming about youth a thought occurred to Sakura as they began to walk back to the village hey Ten Ten you usually keep all those weapons and seals right yeah why Ten Ten asked have you ever thought of branching out adding seals to those weapons Seeing the look Ten Ten was giving her Sakura raised her hands it's just well one of my teammates has been learning wind jutsu lately and when we try to throw weapons at him well wind jutsu Ten Ten replied before looking upward and thought she grimaced a moment later yeah my style probably wouldn't work well against something like that maybe step up the training on close range weapons or branch out with seals like I said Ten Ten thought. Before she nodded she then smiled see helping you is paying. Off after all Sakura smiled. Glad to help her fellow Kunoichi after all she did for her so made any progress with that boy you like I wish Sakura grumbled before she brought her fist to her chest a determined look on her face but I'm not going to give up she then deflated as she remembered something besides I think my chances are better than they were before I'm pretty sure how I acted before just annoyed him probably if he's anything like Niji 1010. Agreed and how'd things go that old friend. Of yours Sakura hung her head shadows covering her eyes that bad how huh, well just keep trying and if it doesn't work out at least you can say you did your best right I guess with a few final swishes Naruto finished his work and set his brush on the floor sitting back and smiling as he pulled up the scroll to look at his handiwork it was an array of kanji and sealing symbols the bases of which fanned out slightly and formed a broken circle it was just a simple storage seal it was the most basic of the basics but everyone had to start somewhere right it wasn't his first time making one right now it was all about repetition like Kakashi sensei said. Using these simple seals as practice for getting this down as fast neatly and accurately as possible while many high level sealing jutsu allowed you to conjure the array out of chakra most required you actually them write out one single mistake and the seal wouldn't work at best and who knew when you'd need to draw one up on the spot he'd had him take up calligraphy for the same reason he placed the scroll back on the ground pulled a single kunai on the circle before making a hand sign seal and a burst of smoke the kunai vanished he smirked for a moment before focusing on it again released the kunai reappeared in a similar cloud of smog naruto grinned as he picked up the scroll another job well done he may only know a few basic techniques at this point but he had already cooked up several ways to use the few seals he knew considering how complex the art was he'd come a long way in the last month or so with some help from his shadow clones and he was glad to say his other skills had improved by leaps and bounds too he'd really been pushing himself as he tried to live up to his parents legacy quickly learning to abuse the hell out of Sakura's gift and his own healing and the idea that his parents were watching gave him all he needed to muddle through all the reading and while there were a lot of things he'd missed out on. 
history like the rise of the Sanin basic facts like chakra being composed of mental and physical energies also apparently the second Okage invented the shadow clone Jutsu Neat he was still catching up but he was determined not to let himself be caught lacking in that department again like the old man said. The Hokage was supposed to mark the road for all to follow an example like the fourth had said how was he doing that if he let himself stay an idiot because studying was too hard speaking of. Example looking back at his sexy jutsu yeah that was probably never going to be seen again he probably needed to talk to Kano Amaru about that well. At least he had inspired the kid to work harder outside of that technique that was something right Kakashi had since up the number of clones he'd used a day to 50 that had required a bit of an adjustment while the combined fatigue of 8 clones left him a bit tired he could shrug it off 50 knocked him out cold so now rather than disperse them. Immediately they'd disperse in groups of 5 at the end of starting in the last hour of training it worked pretty well. He got all the experience and there was enough time between the hits that he could get through and not fall flat on his face and wind up in dreamland he looked over to the kitchen where five clones were getting in some extra training it had taken a few weeks but he'd mastered both the water walking and the leaf cutting exercises Kakashi had taught him the man had since given him. A new method to train both in control and in the wind element, each clone their hands before them channeling wine chakra through their palms the aim was to levitate a leaf and keep it as stable as possible their training had only gotten more intense as the days went by and Kakashi made them a set schedule to stick to they would spend half an hour on warm ups before adding the weighted gear one hour doing exercises one on chakra control another on taijutsu and teamwork a final one on ninjutsu and Jinjutsu tutoring before finally taking a deer rank mission after a rest period with some pointers for independent training like his own Sasuke was still quiet and brooding as always but he didn't put him down as much and Naruto had turned down the jealousy while they competed during just about every training session there was a slight sense of camaraderie there now rather than the spiteful rivalry they once had Sakura, was kinder too she hadn't even hit him in the last month she'd really put her all into catching up to them and she'd toned down that thing she had with Sasuke they all really had come a long way since the day they first met Kakashi Sensei Naruto rose to his feet and made his way to his kitchen a quick cup of ramen for a job well done and then he'd get ready for bed once those clones dispelled he'd be out like a light things were much quieter than they had been a month ago as team 7 awaited their chronically late sensei this time Naruto was sitting on the ground. As he worked on a seal this one was a bit more complex than the standard containment seal but he'd gotten it down three completed ones lay beside him and a few feet away a circle had been carved into the ground where he tested one of them finishing the fourth seal tag he pocketed them and pulled out a book on sealing jutsu looking to find another to try out Sakura sat nearby leaning back on one of the posts as she read a book on poison Sasuke had been the last to join in reading a book on the many ways to use chakra kinda surprising when he was the former head of their class. Naruto found himself a lot less frustrated with his sensei's antics this way oh he was still annoyed as all hell that the man had to be at least two hours late to the meetings he set, but it was more bearable when they weren't standing around doing nothing for those two hours case in point the three looked up as their sensei walked into the clearing not showing the least bit of shame, and having kept them hanging again hey guys how are you doing not even going to try to come up with an excuse sensei. Naruto asked dryly while throwing a slightly bitter look his way he felt a lot less high strung about the silver haired man showing his face without so much as a hint of guilt and it helped them adjust a bit he and Sakura could settle for scathing looks nowadays instead of screaming at him that didn't mean they were any happier with him they just weren't as worked up when he finally got there well you never seem to believe what I tell you anyway no surprise I'd expect better excuses from a five. Year old Sakura spoke up still glaring at her sensei you wound me Sakura Kakashi said with a straight face Sakura scoffed go cry to that black cat you keep telling us about yep just another typical day for team 7 so guys Sakura said getting her teammates attention as the three walked back into the village proper about to go their separate ways after another successful D rank mission they came to a halt as they looked back at her I was thinking I know that you two live by yourselves so well. I asked my parents if they'd be okay if you came over for dinner how huh? really Naruto asked with a blink before grinning needless to say getting invited to Sakura's place was the last thing he expected today that's not necessary Sasuke said with a shrug I know that Sakura replied with a shake of her head raising her hands as if to reassure him I just thought it'd be nice is all I mean you two haven't had a home cooked meal in a long time right and after that I thought we could put our heads together. 
and brainstorm on ways to improve Kakashi Sensei's not going to do everything for us you know she looked away ain't that the truth he hadn't been the one to suggest they start studying while they waited for him and Sakura was the one who bought their weights the silver haired Jounin was definitely working harder at it than he had before but still but then maybe he just didn't want them to rely on him for everything he was there to teach and guide them not hold their hands he'd been trying hard. So he'd give him the benefit of the doubt Sasuke closed his eyes okay really wow that was a surprise Naruto had been sure Sasuke would turn her down maybe they were starting to grow on him even if he did still act all cool and distant he couldn't help but smile at that Sakura's face lit up at that really great I'm sure you'll love it and we really need to think about how do we can communicate in the field. I mean right now we have to rely on radios that's not going to work all the time we need to. Find other ways to communicate and woe slow down save it for the after dinner meet Naruto said though he couldn't deny she had a point there Sasuke was giving her a look of vague interest you've put a lot of thought into this Hasakura seemed a bit bashful at that while I just want our team to be the best we can be you know Naruto nodded yeah I get you thanks for looking out for us Sakura the pink haired girl grinned putting her hands on her hips well someone's gotta keep you boys in line we. All know how you like to show off hey the number one hyperactive knucklehead ninja started he then sheepishly rubbed the back of his head as he remembered he had that nickname well yeah that's kinda true I guess he admitted causing Sakura to chuckle so where's your place anyway Naruto arrived at the Haruno family apartment the next day after cleaning up in the wake of the day's training and mission, with a light spring in his step no surprise really it was the first time he'd ever been. Invited over to someone else's home it wouldn't be a big deal to most but for someone who'd been shunned by just about everyone for most of his life it was a milestone reaching the door he gave it a knock soon enough a blonde woman with green eyes a shade darker than Sakura's opened the door Naruto first one here I see Naruto gave the woman a wide grin hi nice to meet you you must be Miss Haruno please call me Mabuki Sakura's mother replied before standing aside I'm just putting the finishing touches on dinner so you shouldn't have long to wait as long as Sasuke shows up soon Sakura's in her room. It's just at the end of the hall thanks Naruto said stepping inside and taking off his shoes he followed the instructions as he got a look around it was a lot better than his apartment a lot bigger too but that was no surprise his place was on the cheap side of things and was meant for one person you could tell this was a family home knocked on the door come and he heard Sakura say before. He stepped inside the pink haired girl was lying on her bed reading one of her books hey Naruto glad you could make it she said as she swung around and sat up on the bed well not like anyone would say no to free food right nice place you guys have by the way thanks only home I've ever had Sakura replied as Naruto walked over to a nearby desk and pulled out the chair he sat down backward and rested his arms and head on the back Naruto looked over and saw several books that had depictions of the body or flowers on them I see you've been working on some extra credit how Sakura rubbed the back of her head well it's interesting stuff honestly I think I've found a new hobby Naruto chuckled same here never thought I'd find burying my nose in a book font until I took up sealing jutsu Sakura grinned and looked to the side oh wow Naruto's found joy in studying I'll have to look outside it could be raining fire very funny Naruto said dryly with squinted eyes before his lips turned upward you should have seen the look on Irika sensei's face when he caught me in the library that got a laugh out of Sakura so what kind of things did you have in mind well I thought maybe we could look at each other's skills and see if we could come up with some suggestions you know everyone has their own way of thinking, maybe we missed something she began to tick off her other ideas on her fingers we could look at ways to combine our skills and work out ways to share information maybe give each other some advice and training it was then that there was a knock on the door drawing both of their attentions doors open the door open to reveal Sasuke with one hand in his pocket the same look on his face as ever still that he was actually here said a lot Sasuke Sakura smiled widely well look who finally decided to show up Naruto said and greeting the Uchiha air just nodded and grunted in reply stepping into the room and leaning against the wall Sakura and I were just talking about what she had in mind after dinner she's got some pretty good ideas seeing Sasuke's questioning look she repeated what she'd told him Sasuke nodded yeah I can see how we can benefit from that good thinking Sakura the pink haired girl beamed at his praise dinners ready they heard Mabuki call out Naruto wondered if this was what family dinners were always like Kazashi guffawed at the many jokes he made several of which had Naruto laughing as well as his daughter grumbled in exasperation while his wife Occasionally chided him Sasuke was quiet as usual rarely speaking and less spoken to it was nice warm in a way he could only remember from birthday parties or his times at Ichiraku's the food was great too Mabuki had cooked a full course meal. Steaming bowls of vegetables a heaping bowl of rice nori miso soup and grilled fish lay spread out at the center of the table he could count on one hand the times he'd actually seen a full course meal in front of him like this great food Mabuki thanks again. 
for having us over Naruto said after swallowing a mouthful thank you for the compliment you know it's strange Mabuki admitted as she looked at Naruto it never occurred to me that you were actually a member of the Uzumaki clan same here members of the Uzumaki clan are so rare these days I guess I just assumed Kazashi chuckled sheepishly and well you know what they say about that Naruto looked at them hopefully eager to hear more about his lost family did you know anyone from my clan Mabuki shook her head sorry the only ones I knew of were only by reputation Kazashi nodded in agreement beside her much to the blonde's disappointment he had really hoped to hear more about his mother from someone who grew up alongside her so do you three have any dreams or aspirations Sakura's mother asked drawing their attention a lot of genin just look to get by trust me that won't get you far the way she said. That said she was probably speaking from experience Naruto smiled proudly and put his fist to his chest well. My dream is to become Okage, I wanna be the guy everyone in the village looks up to Kazashi snorted and smiled shaking his head Okage ha well there's something to be said about dreaming big well you've got a long road ahead of you but nothing worth doing is easy as they say Mabuki turned to her daughter have you given any thought to your future and my future Sakura's eyes darted back and forth finally landing on Sasuke, before bashfully looking away with a blush well I mean my dream is I see. That hasn't changed Naruto noted flatly but aside from that Sakura then continued I, I don't know I want to be a great Kunoichi someday and I think I'd like learning to be a medic nin but she shrugged I can't think of any real goals specifically Mabuki smiled in approval that's fine you're just starting your career it's no surprise you don't know what you want to do yet I'm sure it'll come to you once you've gone out and experienced enough she then turned to the Uchiha survivor and Sasuke the Uchiha looked at her for a moment before his eyes narrowed in determination I've only ever had two things I wanted, to restore my clan and avenge it Kazashi looked at him seriously while Mabuki nodded and closed her eyes I thought as much it's understandable after what happened yeah Naruto could somewhat understand why Sasuke wanted to restore his clan he hadn't even known his own family but he pined for them mourned what had been lost and wished to make them proud, both his parents and his Clanny couldn't imagine what it would be like to have all that to have such an enormous family and lose them though he couldn't say that he agreed with how Sasuke had closed himself off from everyone he hated being alone and Sasuke had had so many people who wanted to be there for him but maybe that was part of the problem that for all that they wanted to help him they couldn't understand how he felt and he knew it I'm not going to say I understand or try to tell you how you should live your life but listen Mabuki said regarding the Uchiha seriously there are a lot of ninja out there who hold grudges and a lot of them end up dying young because they fly off the handle when they cross paths with the one thereafter I'm not telling you shouldn't want revenge or that there are more important things that's for you to decide just don't go after him until you know you're ready okay Sasuke was quiet for a moment before he gave a quick HN there was silence for a moment before Kazashi spoke up, so was that yes HN no HN or whatever HN we need the context of the HN to fully understand and grasp the HN dad Mabuki watched as the two genin said goodbye to her daughter, and made their way to the door later that night she had to say she was glad she'd agreed to allow them over when Sakura had asked her honestly it had been much too long since her daughter had last had friends over not since she'd broken off her friendship with Ino and let her crush on the Uchiha dominate her social life in fact and Naruto she and Kazashi had never hated him like a lot of the village but they'd been a bit wary after hearing about what happened in wave they had decided to give the boy the benefit of the doubt he seemed like a good kid from what she'd seen and heard he was the type who would stand by his teammates no matter what and what more could she want for her daughter's teammate she couldn't help but worry about Sasuke though as she said his behavior was perfectly understandable given what he'd been through but it was far from healthy she could only help his teammates could pull him out from the dark cloud that had been hanging over him remind him that he didn't have to go it alone and they seemed to be doing a good job of that so far thank you for having us over Sasuke said with a nod well the boy may not show much respect these days but at least he still knew how to show gratitude yeah I had a great time and I think it helped us a lot Naruto said with cheer his hands behind his head well you two are welcome to come and visit whenever you want just try to give us a heads up alright sure thing Mabuki she smiled and nodded before looking between the two and listen I know that the two of you live on your own and that isn't easy I'm not going to pretend I understand what your situations are like but if you ever feel the need to talk about something, my husband and I are here it's the least we can do for Sakura's teammates Naruto blinked before. Smiling again you got it thanks a lot really have a good night she nodded same to both of you Sasuke just grunted in response she watched as the two walked off yes this had been a good idea that her daughter had she hoped that they took her up on that offer it wasn't like they could fill the gap left by their parents but she wanted to offer them what support she could children shouldn't grow up alone that night Sasuke stepped out of his bathroom the night's events running through his head as he 
finished readying for bed it had been a pleasant experience he couldn't lie they'd been pretty productive some of it they'd have to bring up with Kakashi but they'd walked away with new ideas on how they could develop and combine their skills Naruto had made an offer with his ceiling jutsu that he could see a lot of potential in and he had to admit he was glad to see Sakura turning over a new leaf. She'd also backed off on fawning over him something he was infinitely grateful for honestly it annoyed him to no end how the girls of his class would hang off him even when they barely knew him not to mention how most of them sacrificed their fighting skills to maintain their looks just to try and get his attention just stupid what kind of life did they think they were signing up for well at least she wasn't that way anymore much as he didn't want to rely on others he had to admit she was becoming someone he wouldn't mind standing alongside and the same went for naruto though there had been hints of that as far back as their first encounter with Sabuza when he had been assigned to a team he had wished that he could just become the sole apprentice of a skilled Jown and get around all the grunt work and become as powerful as possible as fast as he could he had a long way to go to catch up to him but this actually wasn't so bad as he got to his bed he looked at his nightstand. At the picture of his team on the day they officially passed he thought of Sakura's earnest efforts to Changed the few times they'd gone to a Chiraka ramen at Naruto's behest he smiled another day another dear rank mission man I can't wait to put these behind me Naruto grumbled crossing his arms as he and his team walked down the street after yet another mission that may as well be a chore weeks had passed since their first after training. Get together it had become a somewhat regular thing for them though they didn't always meet at Sakura's home something that Naruto was glad he'd decided to tidy. His place up all that time ago new ideas had been shared between them and with Kakashi's help they'd managed to make some of their ideas work out and of course they'd taken plenty of D-rank missions can't forget about that today they'd had to clean trash out of the river that was a lot of fun do the words be careful what you wish for mean anything to you Sakura asked with a raised brow do you want to get into another mess like the wave mission? I have to agree with Naruto on this one Sasuke. Admitted we could be out getting real experience but we're wasting time with these stupid chores instead D-rank missions exist for a reason you know Kakashi spoke up getting their attention from his place at the rear of their group they turned to find that he once again had his nose in that orange book of his for one thing they're meant to teach some humility to Jenin who think they're ready to take on the world just because they graduated he looked pointedly at all three and Naruto could only chuckle and sheepishly rub the back of his head yeah they'd all thought that in one form or another before wave anyway they also help your sensei get a better idea of your synergy before they take you into real combat and you get a bit of spare change not that you three need that i hope yeah he didn't know about his teammates but that money kakashi had given them had really been burning a hole in his pocket he thought of all the things he could buy with it tons of ramen a better home a new tv but the blonde got the feeling his sensei would be disappointed if he did any of that besides the stuff he had now had worked well enough he had splurged a bit on ramen gotten some mesh armor that he wore beneath his shirt and stocked up on weapons and on ink and sealing supplies but not much else just getting them some quality training gear had demolished Sakura's savings that gave him second thoughts on what he should be spending his money on well anyway I have to go make my report on today's mission so that's it for today their sensei said feel free to do some Independent training is always you should know your limitations by now and with that he was gone vanishing in a burst of speed Naruto turned back to his teammates with his hands behind his head so you guys want to grab a bite or he then heard a sore of hollow scratching behind him he didn't even have to look. He knew what it was they tried this before he saw Sasuke and Sakura looking at something on the ground behind him with either minor annoyance or incredulity yep just like he thought. Actually I think I'm gonna take off and do some training by myself later and then he formed a hand sign and disappeared as his sensei had unlike his teacher he just leaped behind the nearby fence quietly he walked back a few feet hearing faint whispers and sounds of disappointment on the other side before he silently climbed over the wooden barricade just like he thought. There on the ground was really Naruto jumped down channeling chakra to cushion his footfalls took a few steps forward and lifted up the cardboard box that had been painted to look like a rock three voices exclaimed in shock as he held their disguise above them and looked down at them flatly a square rock seriously maybe try a fake wall or the transformation jutsu next time I you saw through us without even looking that's the man I view as my rival Kanoamaru said crossing his arms and trying to look tough in front of his two friends the blonde grinned as he set the box on the ground hey Kanoamaru you guys been working hard I trust and what's with the goggles are you trying to copy me yep nice touch huh boss Kanoamaru said shifting the goggles on his forehead with a wide grin and Naruto shrugged what do you mean? I just wore those as a placeholder for when I'd get my forehead protector you know Naruto replied before he grinned again but they work for you just fine just remember that's what you're aiming for when you've got them on okay Kanoamaru's eyes lit up before he nodded excitedly um are you? 
Free today you said you'd play ninja with us the girl beside Kanomaru spoke up a ninja playing ninja Sasuke asked flatly hey how else am I supposed to help them out they're a bit too young for our kind of training you know Naruto said back Sakura thought about it before nodding fair enough so who are these three anyway I'll let me introduce you Naruto gestured towards the still silent boy this is Udon then to the girl smiling shyly at them that's Moegi he then pointed to their leader who stood as tall and proud as he could and that's Kanoamaru he's the old man's grandson Sakura's brows shot up the old man she then reeled in shock looking between the blonde and his protege wait you mean the third Hokage aha big surprise right but don't think that makes him special he's just like any other little kid hey but Naruto began before looking at the younger boy he's the guy who's going to be the Hokage after me as long as he doesn't slack off he smiled confidently right oh right boss Kanoamaru raised his fist into the air Naruto chuckled before looking at his teammates with a deadpan expression and waving dismissively seriously though don't give him any special treatment. He hates it surprisingly Sasuke nodded and looked at the boy appraisingly tired of living in your grandfather's shadow ha huh? Kanoamaru blinked at him yeah I mean everyone always looks at me as just the Hokage's grandson until them at least he said looking at his friends and then at Naruto before returning. His gaze to Sasuke, I want people to acknowledge me as my own person and the boss told me that means I have to work hard until I can stand on my own two feet until I've made a name for myself Sasuke nodded and closed his eyes well it sounds like Naruto gave you good advice listen to him and you'll get there someday huh Sasuke had been less cold lately. But Naruto couldn't say he expected outright words of encouragement from him never mind the compliment Kanoamaru seemed surprised too before he grinned widely Naruto smiled well thanks for the support Sasuke he then gestured towards the Uchiha heir and the pink haired girl and these are my teammates Sakura Haruno and Sasuke Uchiha you just missed our sensei Kakashi oh so you're the boss's teammates nice to meet you Kanoamaru said Naruto smiled as he watched the younger kids run over to his teammates but then his eyes train on two people walking towards them from further down the alleyway a blonde girl with her hair and pigtails carrying a giant fan on her back and a hooded boy in all black with purple face paint and both had forehead protectors with another village's symbol Sunagakure if you remember right it wasn't long before the others turned to look at them too ha huh, what do we have here the boy asked his eyes squinted and seemingly closed but his head turned to look at the discarded box a couple of kids playing ninja when Sasuke asked that it was a question this boy's tone however was mocking talking down to them Yep this guy wanted to start something he wasn't about to take someone making a jab at his friends lying down well what else are they going to do when they're in the academy Naruto shot back and they might be playing ninja but at least they're not playing dress up does your mom know you raided her makeup supply the blonde girl and Sakura giggled Kanoamaru and his gang burst out laughing while the boy snarled it's war paint asshole yeah I didn't know war paint came in bright purple the boy growled raising a fist while the girl at his side sighed how many times have I told you to lay off the face paint no one else in our village dresses like that damn it Tamari whose side are you on Tamari huh Naruto asked as he turned to the girl putting his hands behind his head I take it you guys are here for the tune in exams that's right Tamari replied with a nod well I'd give you guys a real Kanoha greeting but I think your teammates already worn out is welcome you guys already know where to go Sasuke spoke up if so then I suggest you take that one and beat it he jerked his head at the boy in face paint oh a couple of tough guys I see in that case Kankuro back off all eyes were drawn to a nearby tree there hanging upside down was a boy with short spiky auburn hair with a tan gourd at his back that was nearly as big as he was oddly the kanji for love had been tattooed on the side of his forehead he stood with his arms crossed his face utterly apathetic as his cold green eyes Gazing down at the black clad boy taking in his teammates reaction he realized none of them had even noticed his presence beads of sweat broke out over Kankuro and Tamari's foreheads as they stared up at the newcomer a single glance was all that was needed to know that they were afraid the face painted boy plastered a smile on his face trying to accommodate the other saying Jen and you're embarrassing our village the boy continued you uh but they started shut up or I'll kill you Kankuro trembled. While the new kid didn't show any malice beyond the empty gaze he gave his apparent teammate his reaction made it clear that he believed he'd do it without a moment's thought that put him on edge sure the kid was a jerk but to be intimidated by his own teammate the boy vanished from his spot in a swirl of sand before reappearing in between his teammates my apologies for my teammates behavior we may have gotten here early but that's no excuse to play around he then turned and began to walk away. Let's go hang on Naruto said getting their attention they all turned to face him I got your teammates names but not yours Gara of the desert the red haired boy answered and you three I assume you'll be at the exams too Naruto shrugged to know the applications today and our sensei's been tight lipped about it Gara nodded before looking at the three appraisingly what are your names in case you do participate Naruto smirked confidently Naruto Uzumaki Sasuke 
did the same Sasuke Uchiha Sakura on. The other hand just frowned Sakura Haruno the San Gen and nodded and walked away with his teammates what was that about Sakura asked as she stepped forward you wanna fight him or something kinda Naruto said frowning at their retreating forms he seems strong and I'm always up for a good fight but something about how his teammates acted around him rubs me the wrong way well at least we know it won't be boring Sasuke said all in all gate guarding duty was one of the dullest things one could pull. The man currently guarding the village's main entrance couldn't help but think sure some thought boring was good especially when exciting could mean you're risking life and limb but most would agree that this was one of the worst jobs you could pull short of catching Tora the cat sure there'd usually be a steady trickle of people coming in and out of the village but it's not like you were a bartender you'd usually share two or three sentences and then send them on their way and spend all the rest of your time watching the clouds go by while this place is huge a young female voice caught his attention walking down the road was a group of four the forehead protectors they wore marked them as shinobi of taki earlier exam takers he saw the soul girl and the group a young genin with green hair ran ahead her eyes were alight with excitement and she wore a smile on her face as she looked up at the gates and the okage monument Beyond I can't wait to go sightseeing this is going to be so much fun one of the boys sighed there she goes again fifth time since we left the jown and just shook his head just let it go at least she's not running off into the wilderness this time worst comes the worst. We can find her in the village the girl just laughed as she ran towards the gate time skip as had become routine for team 7 Naruto Sasuke and Sakura were waiting for their sensei this time on a bridge Naruto and Sakura quietly. Read books while Naruto wrote on a scroll lying on the ground, or at least he tried to today was the day the Chunin exams were tomorrow Kakashi had made his decision, they just had to wait for him to show up the blonde had been on pins and needles since he'd woken up and even as he tried to draw another seal as practice he couldn't help but look up for any sign that their sensei had arrived half an hour later saw Naruto bouncing on his feet as his head turned from side to side damn it you'd think. He'd at least show up on time on a day like this did you forget who you're talking about Sakura asked as she leaned back against the railing just be patient, he'll get here when he gets here like always she grumbled the last words with resignation it was another full hour before Kakashi finally decided to show himself hey guys Kakashi greeted his team with a casual wave as he suddenly appeared crouching on nearby Tori gate sorry I'm late afraid I got lost on the road of life he said with a straight face as if that was in any way a valid excuse that's your worst one yet Kakashi sensei Naruto grumbled as he crossed his arms that right there that's why no one ever believes you Sakura said jabbing her finger at the man with a glare well never mind that Kakashi said as he reappeared in front of them Naruto immediately ran up to the silver haired Jounin going from annoyed to excited in the blink of an eye so what did you decide are we in well Kakashi began cupping his chin and trailing off before he quickly reached into his pouch and pulled out three slips of paper giving them one of his eyes smiles yes Naruto immediately let out a cheer and pumped his fist in the air as Sasuke and Sakura joined him their sensei looked over them as he handed out the forms the three of you have come a long way it hasn't exactly been easy and I wish it hadn't taken what it did to put us on the right track but I think you're ready that said it's up to you whether or not you actually sign the application and go through with it oh come on you think we'd back down now after all the work we put in Naruto asked with a smirk Sasuke gave a grunt of agreement beside him while Sakura just stared down at the form with a frown on her face no knowing you three I don't expect you would Kakashi replied but I felt it needed to be said anyway given that the exams begin tomorrow that'll be all for today take the rest of the day off relax do what you need to get ready bring those forms to room 301 at 4 p.m. now dismissed and with that he vanished leaving the trio alone well I guess we're done here real nice of Kakashi sensei to keep us waiting just for a 5 minute meeting Naruto said as he looked at his teammates shouldn't have expected anything less at this point Sasuke said with a shrug he then turned to Sakura it's pretty clear where we stand but what about you think you're up for this Sakura seemed uncertain for a moment staring down at the paper in her hands before she looked up and nodded with a determined expression Sasuke smirked good for the record I think so too the pink haired girl beamed at those words from her crush more and more Naruto had found himself wondering if he even had a chance with her she seemed to only have eyes for Sasuke well at least he could say they were friends that was a step up from before and he liked the way things were between them now alright tomorrow we're going to kick ass and take names Naruto said pumping his fist let's celebrate who's up for a Chiraku's my treat ramen again Sakura asked with a sigh before she smiled I guess they are the best at what they do in the village try the whole continent Sakura chuckled at his never ending praise for his favorite ramen shop well I'm not saying no to free food Sasuke shrugged might as well a far cry from a few months ago when he probably would have just scoffed and walked away he'd have been lucky to get a no thanks before he took off Naruto.
grinned brightly and couldn't help but think of the first day they'd become a team how Sasuke would ignore them if he could and how he would usually put him down how Sakura would yell at him for any little thing or if he mouthed off at Sasuke yes things had changed a lot between them since then and he wouldn't have it any other way Naruto grinned as he ran down the familiar path to the academy the blonde could barely contain his excitement ahead lied the best gen in Kanoha and the other villages had to offer that meant the chance to meet some incredible people and fight lots of powerful opponents challenges that would push his team to their limits where they could show the result of all the hard work they'd put in and at the end of it all his team would take the next step on their path as ninja he was sure of it arriving at the academy he found sasuke already standing at the entrance as he neared the building he saw sakura coming up from another direction looks like she was right on time but then she'd been the one to Suggest they get here with half an hour to spare he slowed down to give Sakura a chance to catch up hey guys he greeted loud enough that both could hear him good afternoon Naruto Sasuke Sakura said as she neared Sasuke acknowledged both with a grunt as they joined him together they entered the building and walked up the stairs but as they reached the second floor Naruto noticed something strange the signs all said this was the third floor of the room numbers all said the same what the hell it was then that he noticed a commotion at the end of the hall a large group of kids around his own age gathered around a door blocked by two other gen and he heard the sound of a blow and someone crashing to the ground as they got near when he looked at the room numbers he saw why. They were standing in front of room 301 or so it would seem seriously did all these guys fall for that Naruto asked in slight disbelief as he looked around at all the kids making fools of themselves Sasuke scoffed looks. Like someone decided to weed out the scrubs if they can't see through something like this then they've got no business being here yeah let's just get around them with body flicker Naruto replied he then noticed Sakura was staring into the crowd something wrong oh no nothing's wrong Sakura replied with a shake of her head you guys go on ahead I'll catch up and with that she walked off towards the ongoing commotion Naruto raised a brow before shrugging he and Sasuke then both made the tiger seal and vanished in a burst of speed traversing the familiar halls in the blink of an eye unnoticed by the would-be exam takers they reappeared further in the building out of sight of the other gen and both looked back for a moment wondering about their teammate before continuing on their way the pink-haired girl rejoined them a few moments later so what was that all about I noticed 1010 in the crowd Sakura answered I knew she had to have seen through that lame trick so I wanted to ask what she was up to apparently her team didn't want to draw attention to themselves they figured if they played along everyone would underestimate them smart Sasuke acknowledged but a waste of time if you ask me I doubt most people who saw through that stunt would pay enough attention to the crowd to recognize them may you never know they could get lucky Naruto said as he put his hands behind his head Sakura picked 1010 out of the mob after all nothing to lose trying right I guess you have a point Sasuke conceded as they entered the large open room that led to the next flight of stairs a voice called out to them from above hang on it that the genin stopped and looked above standing on the next floor was a boy who looked to be about their age he had shiny black hair styled into a bowl cut and the largest pair of eyebrows naruto had ever seen he wore a green jumpsuit with bandages tied around his hands and forearms orange leg warmers and a red forehead protector tied around his waist like a belt the boy leaped down landing in a crouch before standing upright and walking over to them and looking to Sakura hi there Sakura raised a brow looking a bit uncomfortable um hi my name is Rock Lee can I ask for yours the older boy asked and was he blushing Lee oh you're one of Tenton's teammates Sakura realized with a smile she's told me a bit about you guys I'm Sakura Haruno so Tenten did mention me it's nice to meet you and then he gave her a thumbs up and gave her a confident grin his teeth seemed to Sparkle like a nice guy from a cartoon let's go out sometime I'll protect you with my life that caught Sakura completely flat -foot. she just gaped at him for a moment Naruto couldn't help but snicker at the look on her face while Sasuke just raised a brow sorry no Rock Lee seemed to deflate at the rejection he slumped forward his arms hanging limply in front of him with a devastated expression on his face why not look Lee? I'm flattered and all Sakura said rubbing the back of her head and looking away but I mean I'm interested in someone else and besides I just met you Lee seemed to sulk for a second having been rejected by Sakura before himself Naruto stepped forward and gave the green clad boy a pat on the shoulder he couldn't help but think the bushy browed boy was lucky a few months ago and she probably would have insulted him that answer caused the boy to rebound however and he brought a fist to his chest as his eyes burned with determination of course you have no reason to believe me right now just watch I will not stop until I prove myself worthy of your affection Sakura took a step back uh, okay he then turned to Naruto for a brief moment to nod and say thank you then his attention shifted to Sasuke but that's not the only reason I came here he stated as he moved to stand across from the Uchiha you must have heard my name just now what is yours Sasuke Uchiha Rock Lee nodded so it is as I thought 
you are the progeny of the famous Uchiha clan and that would make you this year's number one rookie his feet shifted one foot before the other as he put one arm behind his back and raised the other held flat in front of him will you fight me here and now it would be an honor to test my strength against someone of your renown you wanna fight me because of my family name Sasuke asked frowning fine I'll show you what the Uchiha are capable of Naruto placed his hands behind his head as he looked at his teammate his eyes squinted near shut you sure about this Sasuke Sasuke nodded as he fell into his own fighting stance yeah I'm not one to back down from a challenge the blonde shrugged Naruto couldn't exactly blame the Uchiha they were alike in that way he stepped back and out of the way along with Sakura for a moment the two boys stared each other down before Sasuke made the first move charging forward as the Uchiha air neared the green clad boy vanished in a burst of speed reappearing in the air above and launching a sweeping kick aimed at his opponent's face Sasuke ducked down to dodge but the moment Lee landed he continued the motion Sasuke fell to the side and put his palm on the ground letting the attack pass over him before he launched himself back and landing in a crouch before making a tiger seal mirroring Lee vanished in a flurry of motion reappearing above Lee and bringing his leg down and an axe kick the boy blocked with his arm but Sasuke twisted his body into a sweeping kick of his own forcing the older genin back as he placed his palm on the floor and flipped backward onto his feet, he immediately launched himself at the green-clad genin throwing a punch aimed at his face Lee brushed the attack aside and raised his leg to counter-attack but Sasuke jumped over the kick flipping in the air and landing facing toward his foe the Uchiha air closed his eyes and smirked confidently when he opened them his eyes had both been dyed crimson with two tomo marks, in each eye so he decided to pull out the Sharingan. Naruto wasn't sure of his opinion on that he sure as hell wasn't going to show off his chains unless he knew he'd been backed into a corner playing your best cards too early is what got Kakashi Sensei in trouble with Sabuza. well Sasuke probably knew what he was doing Sasuke once more charged at Lee and threw a flurry of blows at the older genin only for him to block or weave around them the exchange ended in a jab from Sasuke the attack was swept aside by Lee but Sasuke used the momentum to Spin into a kick only for Lee to blur into motion ducking under the blow and kicking Sasuke square in the jaw sending him flying into the air Naruto took a step forward while he heard Sakura gasp beside him so this is the famous Sharingan the I said to be able to pierce any Jinjutsu and reveal the secrets of all ninjutsu however Lee crouched down before vanishing in a blur once more reappearing behind Sasuke it's not as effective against Taijutsu this is dancing leaf shadow Sasuke identified. The technique good I Lee complimented I came here to prove that hard work can match raw talent even that of the famous Uchiha clan he said as the bandages around his arm began to unravel now this is the end only for them to be pinned to the wall by a pinwheel what as Lee was snagged the Uchiha air began to fall to the ground Naruto and Sakura ran towards him Sakura diving to break his fall ducking down to her knees as she caught him Lee. What were you thinking they turned to see Lee kneeling? On the floor while being berated by a turtle this just got weirder and weirder Naruto raised a brow not sure what to think about what he was witnessing hey is that turtle a summon I guess Sakura replied with uncertainty as Sasuke got back on his feet she followed a moment later that technique is forbidden the turtle declared sternly causing Lee to cower B. But I wasn't going to use the other one Lee weakly defended himself you fool you think you can get away with an excuse like that the turtle yelled causing the green clad genin to cringe he stood upright and hung his head down giving up all attempts to defend himself you already know a shinobi should never reveal their secret techniques unless it's necessary I know are you prepared to pay the price yes sit then come on out guy sensei the turtle beckoned and then a burst of smoke erupted from his back it cleared to reveal a well built man he was clad in the same green bodysuit as Lee in fact the boy seemed to almost be a clone of him Right down to the eyebrows he stood on the turtle shell flamboyantly hip cocked one arm in the air one hand circled around as I hate everybody life treating you good Naruto's jaw dropped as he and Sasuke stared utterly perplexed at the man's appearance this is Kakashi sensei's rival Sakura's reaction was different however she brought her hand to her forehead in chagrin as the man mirrored Lee's earlier nice guy stance complete with sparkling teeth oh boy the pink haired girl groaned Lee the man said turning from them to his own student are you prepared I am the boy said squaring his shoulders and bracing himself you guy pulled back his fist and closed the distance between himself and his student in the blink of an eye idiot his fist slammed into his student's face with such force that the teen was sent flying halfway across the room blood flying from his nose he tumbled across the floor and came to a stop in a heap on the ground once more Naruto and Sasuke could only gape. 
while Sakura just stared dully at the proceedings guy walked over to his student as he slowly picked himself off the ground he kneeled down just a foot away from his student Lee Yu Gai Sensei Lee said as he looked up at his teacher it's okay Lee you don't have to say anymore for a moment they both stared tears streaming from their eyes then against all odds things got even weirder Lee threw himself at his sensei the two embraced sobbing as they held each other and to add to the sheer bizarreness of it all the image of a fading sunset over the ocean appeared behind them waves crashing upon the craggy shore Sasuke's disbelief had turned into pure annoyance Naruto couldn't pull his eyes away no matter how much he wanted to it was like watching an unfolding disaster that left you rooted to the spot desperate to run look away or do something while your body refused to move Sakura just sighed shaking her head and shrugging as if to say what can you do yep that's guy all right Oh right she was friends with another one of his students she probably heard stories finally they broke their embrace and stood guy put his hand on his student's shoulder it's alright Lee it's normal to make mistakes when you're young you're too kind guy sensei Lee said gratefully however you started a fight and nearly broke one of the rules I set for that you'll need a more substantial punishment he then raised his fist into the air 500 laps around the training ground after the exams yes guy sensei naruto's heart went out to 10 10 as well as whoever their other teammate was if this is what they had to deal with every day it was then that the older of the green clad duo turned to one massively browed eye on them hey kids how's kakashi sensei doing still treating you right yeah he's good naruto replied and then what guy said nudged something in his mind he remembered how Kakashi was worried Ten Ten would tell Guy the blonde snickered gave him a talking to hug Guy bowed his head bringing a trembling fist to his chest I was so disappointed what I heard from Ten Ten how little he taught you I was afraid that he had passed into the twilight of his youth too soon he looked up and gave them a thumbs up as he smiled revealing sparkling teeth but all it took were my words and your determination to reignite his flames of youth I'm glad to see he hasn't faltered since Suddenly an image came to Naruto's mind he pictured the embrace between teacher and student from moments earlier except in place of Lee it was Kakashi trying desperately to talk Guy out of it he was ignored the man grabbed him and pulled him into a hug as the sunset illusion shined Kakashi groaned in dismay a mortified expression visible on what little of his face you could see he immediately burst out laughing hey, are you laughing at Guy sensei Lee yelled furious at any perceived slight against his beloved teacher and no he just reminded me of something as all naruto managed to get out amid peals of laughter guy seemed to ignore his mirth anyway you guys and lee should head to the classroom he then threw a kunai at the pinwheel freeing lee's bandages good luck lee later and with that he vanished there was no blur of motion he was there one moment and gone the next thank you guy sensei lee said reapplying his bandages sasuke i'll tell you one more thing while i challenged you to test my abilities there's someone else I want to fight my teammate Niji he is probably the most powerful genin in Kanoha he smiled confidently I entered these exams to defeat him but I intend to prove myself against you as well be prepared he then leaped up to the floor above and left Sasuke scoffed he won this round but neither of us showed our best stuff next time huh he turned to Naruto who had outright collapsed in laughter now all right what's so funny Sakura asked with a frown putting her Hands on her hips are remember how they hugged just now uh, don't remind me remember what Kakashi sensei said about guy finding out how he taught us his teammates looked at each other for a moment Sakura soon joined him in laughter while Sasuke chuckled with a small grin once they calmed themselves down the trio made their way up the stair and towards classroom 301 to the next step on their journey as shinobi as they reached the room they found Kakashi standing in front of the door the silver Haired Jounin had his hands in his pockets as he greeted them hey guys glad you all made it Kakashi sensei what are you doing here came to wish us luck Naruto asked more or less the copy ninja replied with a nod truthfully you can only take this exam as a team of three but I would have been surprised if any of you had backed down he then looked over his students I just came to say one last time I'm proud of you all and I have faith that you'll go far here Naruto and Sakura smiled while Sasuke smirked at the vote of confidence now go the three walked past their sensei and opened the door to the designated room the moment the threshold creaked open every eye in the room turned to them the three genins of team seven found themselves the subject of glares from a room full of dozens of other hopefuls from numerous villages some around their age some older and even nearing adulthood a wave of killing intent washed over them thrown out by some of the more aggressive genin the three barely had time to process this before Sasuke was suddenly pounced on from behind Sasuke your hair cried a familiar voice hanging on the back of Sasuke much to the Uchiha ear's annoyance was a girl with blue eyes and long platinum blonde hair tied in a ponytail with a bang framing the right side of her face she wore a purple blouse and a matching apron skirt with her forehead protector tied around her waist like a belt bandages covering her thighs in Midrafino Yamanaka Sakura's former friend and 
rival in love the pink-haired girl had mentioned that she tried to smooth things over with the blonde apparently it hadn't gone well you have no idea how much I was hoping you'd be here the blonde asked as she hung off Sasuke's neck oblivious to the irritated look he was giving her I've missed those brooding good looks have you missed me too Sakura's I twitched get off of him Ino oh Sakura they let you and that billboard sized brow of yours in here too Ino asked pulling down her eyelid and Sticking her tongue out at her so you're here too ha how troublesome another blast from the past drew Naruto's attention he turned to see Ino's teammates. A boy with short black hair tied in a spiky ponytail he wore a short sleeved grey jacket over a mesh armor t-shirt and brown pants he looked like he was in a perpetual state of boredom this was Shikamaru Nara easily the laziest person Naruto had ever met I knew this would be a pain but I didn't know it'd be this bad Naruto put his hands behind his head and grinned let me guess. You're only here because Ino dragged you and am I right no prizes for that one Shikamaru answered completely unashamed Naruto just chuckled Shikamaru hadn't changed at all and neither had the other boy at his side he saw Choji Akimichi was a rather well he'd put it chubby kid he had spiky brown hair that stood up straight divided into two parts by his unique forehead protector he wore a short sleeved green Hayori with a long white scarf over a white shirt with the kanji for food together with black shorts and bandages over his legs and forearms he said nothing just munched contentedly on his bag of potato chips yahoo we found you guys the kanoa genin all turned to see another familiar face looks like the gang's all here kiba inazuka was a wild looking boy he had black eyes with vertical slit pupils and sharp canine teeth and wore dark grayish pants and a gray coat lined with black fur with its head up on his head sat a small white dog that went with him wherever he went oh hi Naruto beside him his teammate Hinata Hyuga greeted him Hinata was a pale slender girl with the featureless white eyes that all of her clan had she had dark blue hair styled in a heim cut and wore a cream colored hoodie with flame symbols on the upper sleeves and white fur around the cuffs and hem with dark navy blue pants when Naruto looked at her she blushed and looked away completing the trio was Shino Aburame he had bushy brown hair and wore round sunglasses. At all times Naruto didn't think anyone back in his class had even seen his eyes before he wore a sea green jacket with an upturned collar and brown pants looks like all the rookies are taking the exam this year I wonder how far we'll get huh Sasuke Kiba said with a confident smirk. As he looked to the former head of their class we've been training like crazy we're going all the way to the top mech keep thinking that you'll be bragging right up until we send you to the vet Naruto shop back what? was that geez you guys need to calm down a new voice cut in as one the nine rookies turned to see an older boy coming their way the newcomer looked like he was at the tail end of his teen years he had onyx eyes and ash gray hair tied in a ponytail and sported a pair of black rimmed circular glasses he wore a purple high collared sleeveless shirt with matching pants a white undershirt and a white cloth waistband you guys are rookies fresh out of the academy right it's pretty obvious you're Acting a bunch of like schoolgirls this isn't a picnic you know and just who are you Eno asked clearly annoyed at the older Genin for interrupting their back and forth my name's Kabuto but instead of focusing on me you should look behind you the Genin did so and saw a group of Genin with the symbol for Amage Cure on their forehead protectors glaring at them suddenly they became aware of a small amount of killing intent aimed their way it was barely noticeable but now that they were focused on the source they could all feel it those guys are from aim I hear they have short tempers everyone hears on pins and needles so you should pipe down before you cause a scene some of the other genin seemed a bit unnerved. Kiba lost his confidence stance Eno shivered Hinata took a step back but after facing the likes of Zabuza team 7 was unaffected for the most part one can't say I blame you for being clueless Kabuto continued with a shrug you're just a bunch of cute rookies after all you remind me of how I used to be so this isn't your first time then Sakura asked no in fact this is my seventh time taking these exams Kabuto replied as he reached back into his pouch yikes well given that Naruto had failed the genin exam even if only due to chakra control issues he had no room to talk so I guess that means you know a lot about what's going on here Naruto guessed putting his hands behind his head are these exams always about the same how do they shake Things up good question Kabuto commented as he pulled out a deck of cards well it'd be no fun to spoil the surprise for the newbies but suffice to say the latter stages of the exam are always the same but they're testing your combat skill among other things the first test is the one that's always something different though they tend to run in a similar vein he held up the cards spreading them out to display them to the younger genin these are my ninja info cards they've got all the information. 
I've amassed for my years taking these exams ninja info cards Eno asked Kabuto placed one card on the ground and put his index finger on it they look blank but once I've channeled some chakra into it wind raged around the card for a brief moment before suddenly a map of the elemental nations became visible it was arranged in a bar graph indicating the number of participants sent by their hidden village and they reveal their secrets look here Kanoa has the most teams no surprise given its hour. Home turf followed by Sunagake your aim Kusataki and Aoto sent one team do you have cards on individual ninja Sasuke asked though curious about someone Kabuto question Rock Lee of Kanoha and Gara of Suna I you already know their names that's no fun Kabuto said as he drew two cards from the deck he placed one on the ground and revealed it to the group it had a picture of the gen and a graph of their statistics and even their mission history Rock Lee he's a year older than you guys he's done 20d. Ranks in 11 C rank missions his sensei is Guy and his teammates are Niji Hyuga and Ten Ten he was the dead last in the academy but since he's made great strides with his taijutsu since he graduated but his other skills are questionable at best he then unveiled his second card Gara of the desert he's from another village so I don't have much information on his abilities but he's done 8 C rank missions and whoa a B rank. As a genin it's also rumored he's never even been scratched before the Jenin silently took in his information as you can see all the villages have sent the best they could muster to try to improve their standing or make a name for themselves well I can't say much about Odo since they're a small village that was just started up but the other villages are filled with talented kids like Gara and Lee T that's a bit discouraging Hinata spoke timidly it's to be expected. Only the best of the best are nominated for the exams Kabuto replied this is no cakewalk Hinata. Wasn't the only one of the rookies feeling intimidated but Naruto just grinned excitement brimming in his blue eyes when Sakura noticed she just shrugged her shoulders and shook her head here we go the pink haired girl said drawing Ino's attention Naruto turned back to the crowd of assembled genin and pointed calling them all out alright listen up I'm Naruto Uzumaki and if anyone wants a piece of me I'll gladly introduce your face to the floor. What the hell is he thinking Ino yelled as she turned to her former friend Me that's Naruto for you Sakura replied before smiling and turning to Sasuke besides while I can't say I'm that sure of myself I'm sure Sasuke feels the same way the Uchiha smirk was all the answer they needed grinning the blonde turned back to his teammates and put his hands on the back of his head not at all caring that he'd probably just made himself a target it was just fine with him. With all the work they'd done Naruto was sure they could take whatever came. Their way then in an instant he was alert as were Sasuke and Sakura he saw train instinct alerting them to an impending attack looking out the corner of his eye he saw three blurs moving almost unnoticed through the crowd of genin and they were converging on Kabuto he wasn't about to let someone attack a fellow Kanoa shinobi a moment later a boy with black spiky hair the symbol of Oto on his forehead protector jumped into the air and threw two kanai at Kabuto who leaped back to dodge in and Instant another Odo Genin appeared in front of Kabuto fist cocked back to attack he never had the chance in an instant Sasuke appeared in the air beside him in a burst of speed the Odo Genin had no time to react before the Uchiha delivered a sweeping kick to his chest sending him flying back into the wall his spiky haired teammate grits his teeth as he landed immediately moving to charge forward with his air. Raised to attack too bad now it was Naruto's turn he blurred into motion reappearing in. A crouch before the Odo Genin and within his guard he had just enough time to look shocked before Naruto delivered an uppercut to his chin before spinning into a kick that slammed right into his solar plexus the boy went flying into the air and towards the crowd which parted he flipped back and landed on his feet wiping a trickle of blood from his mouth on his sleeve as he grits his teeth at the blonde who scowled back the Odo team's final member. A kunoichi with long black hair appeared on. Their flank her hands crossed over her chests and bond held between her fingers now it was Sakura's time to shine the pink haired Kunoichi appeared in the air above the other genin who immediately threw her sunban in an attempt to turn Sakura into a pincushion she was disappointed when they sailed right through her she'd been fooled by a simple clone jutsu and the distraction was all the time Sakura needed to appear in front of her a throat punch, had her grasping at her neck leaving her open to a jab to the stomach Sakura spun and slammed her foot into the genin's face sending her reeling trying to attack a ninja of Kanoha here before these exams even start you three must be dumber than you look Naruto growled I'm gonna make you regret that punk the spiky haired boy snarled just try it and I'll send you back to Oto on a stretcher quiet down you worthless bastards a rough voice called out at that instant a massive cloud of smoke erupted at the front of the room when it cleared several Adult shinobi were standing behind a man who was clearly their leader he was a tall imposing man with two long scars on his face. 
one that trailed from below his right eye down the side and the other from beside his left eye down through his lip he wore a bandana style forehead protector and a black trench coat over a dark colored Kanoha intelligence division uniform thanks for waiting I'm Ibiki Marino the proctor for the first stage of the exam the intimidating figure had quite a few of the Jenin and the mass of hopefuls cowed the man then pointed at rookies and those around them there will be more fighting while I'm here guided unless you want to be disqualified before we even get started hey don't look at us these three were the ones who wanted to start something Naruto said with a shrug I don't care who started it I'm ending it apologies we got carried away the bandaged Odo Jenin said Ibiki just scoffed let me say this now there's to be no fighting without express permission from an examiner and even then killing will not be tolerated do I make myself clear no one question him good we will now start the first stage of the Chunin exams instead of your current seating arrangements you'll draw tabs and sit in the seat you're assigned we will then hand out the exams one of the proctors held up a stack of papers Naruto's I twitched a paper test are you kidding me Naruto side chin resting on his hand as he waited on the proctors to just get on with it when he had imagined what kind of challenges these exams held a paper test had decidedly not been among them what was even the point what could a written test prove about your ability to be a chunin this was going to be troublesome as Shikamaru would say wasn't it Naruto a quiet voice beside him said he looked to see Hinata sitting beside him ha huh? he hadn't even noticed her let's do our best she said with an encouraging smile and a light blush Naruto smiled and nodded and her blush deepened ah don't turn your tests over yet listen to what I have to say Ibiki ordered before tapping a stick of chalk on the blackboard behind him I'll now explain the rules of the test I'll write them on the chalkboard as I go on but questions will not be answered so listen closely I'm only going to say this once the first rule you all start with 10 points and the same number of questions it works on a subtraction system so you lose one point for each wrong answer the second rule is that this is a team test whether you pass or fail will be determined by your team's combined score the third rule is that anyone caught cheating will have two points deducted for every offense lose all your points you're out and so is your team we've got our eyes on you on you one of the chunin said reclining in his chair with a smirk freaking out some of the gen and anyone fool enough to be caught cheating doesn't deserve to be here Ibiki smirked if you want to be considered shinobi then prove your worth as for the final rule should you lose all your points for any reason your teammates will be disqualified along with you he took a moment to bask as that sank and now begin Naruto grit his teeth and turned over his test grabbing his pencil and ready to show that all that studying Kakashi had made him do wasn't for nothing then he looked at the test skipping over the first question then the second then the third he came to a realization he couldn't answer a single one he went back to the first question practically burned a hole in the paper as he tried to work it out tapped his pencil on the table as a cold sweat began to break out on his forehead how could it possibly be this hard he went over the questions again and again hoping something would click it never did and he could hear more and more pencils meeting paper as the minutes ticked by how could he still do this bad after all the time he spent catching up okay calm down like kakashi sensei said getting frustrated won't help anything he took a calming breath and looked back at the test again still he failed to figure out even a single question hang on there was no way the test could be this hard it was in a whole different league than the tests at the academy sure this was the next step up but still and it's not like their Jown and sensei kept up their schooling sure kakashi had him catching up on what he missed not that he didn't plan to stop there but that was a special case things he needed to know not complex mathematics and trajectories and oh oh that's how it was naruto had been right stuff like this had nothing to do with being a chunin they weren't supposed to prove what they knew they were supposed to cheat and not get caught that was a problem though he had some ways of getting information but none of them would work with all the proctors watching him well fortunately a test like this took your teams Information sharing abilities to task 2 he put his pencil to his chin as he thought not on the test mind you Kakashi had told them all something during their training. If you find a weakness in yourself do your best to cover it he was thinking of how he could avoid being caught in a situation like this again it was then that what he was waiting for happened he felt a genjutsu fall over him but didn't fight it words appeared in front of him suspended in midair thank you Sakura your A. Lifesaver Naruto thought it was one of the ideas they had hit upon during one of their brainstorming sessions about sharing information. A Jinjutsu made for communication they needed a lot of help from Kakashi and it wasn't something he could use since Jinjutsu was his worst subject but they'd pulled it off they'd been hoping for more but this worked for now Naruto copied the answers and smiled but that turned into a frown when he got to the end the 10th question was blank it just said it would be revealed after the 45 minute mark well whatever nothing to do now but wait it wasn't too long after that that the test saw its first dismissal they were just the first time past a few more teams got the as before finally Ibiki called out 
Alright listen up it's time to unveil the 10th and final question but before that there are some additional rules to go over it was at that moment that that face paint wearing guy Kankaro walked back into the room ah uh, aren't you lucky you came. Back just in time I hope you found your trip to the bathroom enlightening considering how much weight he put on that last word Kankaro probably just got busted for something either way he went back to his seat these two rules only apply to the 10th question listen carefully and try not to let them frighten you Ibiki began first of all it is up to you if you wanna take the 10th question whoa wait a second it's up to us what kind of rule is that Tamari asked what happens if we don't take it. If you choose not to take the 10th question then you will instantly lose all your points in other words. You and your team will automatically fail what the hell is that one of the genin called out then of course will take it another said and as for the other rule the scarred man paused to let the tension build for a moment then delivered the blow if you choose to take this question and answer incorrectly you will be banned from the chunin exams you'll remain genin for the rest of your lives. That's bull man Kiba exploded that's ridiculous there are plenty of people who've taken these exams before Ibiki chuckled before answering you guys crapped out I'm in charge of this year my exam my rules there was a cruel grin on his face as he watched the genin squirm but I'm not completely without mercy. I gave you a way out if you don't think you'll get it right there's the door he paused to let that sink and now let's begin those who don't want to take the risk raise your hand once you're Number is called you and your team are out a few moments of silence passed as the genin fought with themselves were they brave enough to take the risk did they leave and drag their team down with them and Naruto was no exception if he took this test and failed his dream would be over a genin making Hokage yeah and next the sage of the six paths would show up and solve world hunger but if he quit now Sasuke and Sakura would be out too Naruto knew that whatever this question was Sakura could. Answer at 100% at the very least he'd be robbing her of the chance to make Chunin this year eventually the first hand was raised then another and then another Naruto felt the anxiety gnawing away at him as he thought of his future and those of his teammates at last he came to a decision he took a breath raised his hand and slammed it on the desk blowing away. All his fears like hell I'll back out the blonde declared I've never let anything stand between me and my dreams and I'm not starting now. So what if I'm stuck as a gen in forever I'll still find a way to become Okage you don't scare me Ibiki stared at him unmoved by his words this is your last chance keep in mind your life is riding on this decision back out or risk everything I never go back on my word that's my ninja way Naruto replied the scarred proctor closed his eyes then looked around the room taking in the now confident faces of the remaining gen and then he smirked very well to everyone still remaining once more he let the tension build and then congratulations on passing the first test for a moment all the genin just gaped at the man stunned by those words finally Sakura broke the silence wait what do you mean what about the 10th question Ibiki smiled widely in contrast to the menacing expressions he'd made before this one was friendly there isn't one or more accurately the 10th question was simply the choice to take it or not if that's true then what was the point of the first nine questions Tamari called out furious that all of that work and anxiety had been for nothing the point of the first nine questions was to test your information gathering ability Ibiki answered first as I explained at the beginning whether you pass or fail depended on your whole team doing well that would put pressure on each member to not screw things up for everyone but the questions were not one's most if any genin could hope to answer basically you were supposed to cheat without getting caught for that purpose we had a few chunin hidden among you and anyone caught blatantly cheating was failed and with that the scarred man unwrapped his bandana and unveiled what was beneath for all. To see and quite a few of the genin Naruto included went pale or recoiled at the sight of Biki's head was a mess of scars burn marks and screw holes along with many other wounds because there are times when information is more important than the life of any one shinobi and on missions and battlefields people risk their lives to get their hands on it if the enemy notices you there's no guarantee that the information will be accurate. This is what could happen should you chance upon misinformation. Thus the first test was to weed out any genin who couldn't gather intelligence effectively but wait what about the 10th question Tamari asked sounding confused Naruto didn't blame her he got the point of the first 9 questions but why throw all that out the window with the last one Ibiki shrugged and closed his eyes the 10th question was the true purpose of the test a simple leap of faith take it or don't he then looked over all the genin it's a hard choice risk your career or drag your teammates down with you let's say you do become Chunin you're given a dangerous mission say steal a secret document with everything about the enemy and their preparations unknown can you turn this mission down because you're afraid for your lives or those of your comrades no and many of the gen and Naruto included smiled as they understood the point of the final question no matter how dangerous the mission you don't have the option to back out the courage to face the unknown and overcome any 
hardship are necessary traits for a shinobi those who can't put their fates on the line who would take the coward's way out there unworthy of being called ninja let alone chunin he then smiled all of you have passed my test the first stage of the chunin exams is now over i wish you good luck just as everyone started celebrating ibiki's expression dropped as his gaze turned to the window a moment later it shattered chunin jumped while nearby jenin shielded their faces as a black ball flew into the room and unfurled sticking to the floor and ceiling with kanai emerging from the ball was a slender woman with violet hair styled in a fanned out ponytail and light brown pupilous eyes she was pretty young looking to be in her mid-twenties she wore a mesh bodysuit that covered her from neck to thigh a tan overcoat a dark orange miniskirt a dark blue belt and pale gray shin guard she wore a standard kanoa forehead protector as it was intended the cloth was revealed to be a banner that read the sexy and single proctor of the second exam Anko Midarashi Alright you brats this is no time to celebrate the woman who could only be Anko shouted to the test takers waving her arm with her dramatic flair I'm Anko Midarashi the proctor for the second stage of the Chunin exams now let's go follow me she pumped her fist in the air she was met with silence a few seconds later Ibiki peeked out from behind the banner and gave her an annoyed look bad timing Anko you're early again he said Causing the woman to blush in embarrassment Naruto chuckled that seemed like something he'd do after regaining her composure Anko looked out over the crowd and did some mental math 66 she turned to Ibiki with a scowl what the hell Ibiki you let 22 teams pass are you going soft or something there's a lot of outstanding genins this year that's all Ibiki replied with a smirk well that's fine I guess my test will cut that number in half at least Anko then smiled and while Ibiki's grins had been Cruel hers was plain sadistic follow me I'll explain once we get there the genin had been led to a massive gated off forest the trees were the largest many of the hopefuls had ever seen Naruto saw tiny sections of root systems that were bigger than he was despite how spaced out the trees were it was still so dense that they couldn't see that far and the whole place radiated a sense of ominousness that had some genin intimidated. Naruto could hear them muttering welcome to the 44th training. Ground my own little home away from home Anko said genuine cheer in her voice as she looked over her shoulder into the dense woods, but I doubt you brats will think of it as fondly as I do pretty soon you'll all find out how this place got its nickname, the forest of death Naruto couldn't lie. The forest looked creepy but after what they went through on the wave mission he found he wasn't really intimidated what was the worst that was in their giant beasts half forest of death huh doesn't look so scary to me he said placing his hands behind his head and closing his eyes to a brave one ha anko replied with a cheerful smile in the next instant she drew a kanai and threw it straight at the blonde naruto didn't have his guard up he hadn't had a reason to have his guard up so he was unprepared for an attack the blonde had just enough time to shift to the side but the weapon still grazed his cheek and good reflexes not good enough though anko said as she reappeared behind him leaning down until her head was beside his shoulder she then licked the blood from his wound kids like you tend to be the first ones to die here spilling that pretty red blood everywhere suddenly she pulled out another kanai and pointed it behind her as a woman appeared behind her it was another genin one from kusa she was tall with long straight black hair that trailed all the way down her back she wore plain gray garbs with a black polo and pants underneath a thick purple rope belt tied in a large not behind her back and hanging from her mouth was a ridiculously long tongue that she was currently using to hold up Anko's throne kanai like a third arm your kanai she offered why thank you the purple haired woman replied but just some friendly advice don't sneak up behind me unless you wanna die I'm sorry I get excited at the sight of blood too plus you cut my lovely hair and I just couldn't help myself she replied as she turned and walked back to her teammates what the hell is up with her Naruto couldn't help but wonder all right now before we get started I'm going to need you all to sign some papers Anko said as she walked back to her place at the head of the group Naruto wasn't the only one looking at the forms curiously but whatever questions they had were answered by her next words they're all waivers so I'm not liable if you die on now to explain the second test you can turn in your waivers at that booth behind me afterward this one's a survival test this training Ground has 44 locked gates a river and a tower at the center you'll be using everything at your disposal to compete in a no holds barred scroll battle she explained holding up two scrolls one white and marked with the kanji for heaven and one black and marked with the kanji for earth you'll be fighting over these scrolls of heaven and earth half of you will get one and the rest the other so there'll be 11 of each to pass this test. A team had to make it to the tower with both scrolls. But there's a time limit you only have 120 hours, 5 days. 
To do this five days Naruto heard Ino Shao based on what he knew of her she probably didn't want to spend more than 10 minutes in a place like this what about dinner no surprise that food was the first thought on Choji's mind you'll have to fend for yourselves just watch out for the man-eating beasts giant insects poisonous plants and so on Anko replied nonchalantly Naruto could hear Choji whimpering from where he was poor guy but Hadn't they had survival training before they were eventually going to have to rough it at some point in their careers after all it's not likely all 11 potential teams will pass as the days go on it'll be harder and harder to find a scroll there'll be less and less time to take a breather and the whole area is crawling with enemies you won't have much time to rest make no mistake some of you will die in this forest she let that sink in for a moment before continuing any teams that don't make it to the tower within the time limit fail you'll also be disqualified if you lose a teammate and there's no quitting in the middle, step through the gate you'll be in there for the full 5 days and one more rule, don't look inside the scrolls until you make it to the tower Chunin will be asked to handle top secret information from time to time consider it a test of your trustworthiness she took a breath one last piece of advice, don't die all the teams split up sign their waivers and got their scrolls Naruto and his team waited at one of the gates when finally they heard Anko call out the second test of the Chunin exams. Starts now the gate before them open Naruto turned to his teammates let's go and they ran inside Naruto Sasuke and Sakura leaped across the massive root systems that covered the ground ready Naruto Sasuke asked from behind him glancing back at his teammate out of the corner of his eye Naruto replied way ahead of you as he made a cross shaped hand seal in an Instant a burst of smoke erupted around him 12 clones of Naruto emerged from the smoke alongside the blonde the clones quickly ran through three more hand seals themselves they were once more enveloped in smog and when it cleared 12 unassuming birds flapped their wings and flew up into the trees above basic jutsu like that were really underrated as their newly made scouts vanished team 7 came to a rest on the forest floor so what now we wait Sakura asked just then screams echoed throughout the forest and the three turned to the direction the sound came from They'd known that there'd be death at this stage Anko made sure of that but still to hear those screams was more than a bit disturbing looks like someone's already made a move Sasuke observed there was a pause as the three contemplated what that meant then Naruto began to walk off toward the trees be right back the blonde called over his shoulder where are you going Sakura asked bathroom he answered as he walked into the mass of tree roots once he felt he was far enough from his teammates he Walked over to a nearby route when suddenly a shadow descended upon him from above the assailant slammed the back end of a kunai into his head the attacker's moment of triumph was shattered when Naruto burst into a cloud of smoke at the moment of impact what he had just enough time to exclaim before Naruto appeared in the air behind him delivering a roundhouse kick to his head and sending him flying into one of the roots he hit the wood, with enough force to fracture the bark a loud crack rang. Out at the impact, before he fell to the ground and didn't move Naruto scowled at the unconscious aimed Jen and Jackass he snarled as he walked towards the down boy reaching into his pouch and pulling out wire strings Naruto went back to the clearing after restraining the enemy and taking care of his business the blonde was still scowling as he rejoined his team and Sakura took notice and frowned something wrong some aimed Jen and tried to ambush me when I was answering the call of nature Naruto ground. Out as he looked back where he came from I mean I get the whole attack when you're least expected thing but man that's low what happened to him did he have a scroll on him Sasuke asked now nah, we're not that lucky I just left the jerk tied up back there Naruto pointed back where he came with his thumb since no one came out to save him I guess he was alone maybe it'd be a good idea for us to split up too Sasuke considered drawing his teammates attention not like we'd actually be alone with your Watchers looking out for us Naruto nodded and then jerked his head and gazed into the forest as memories hit him one of his clones had dispersed to warn him something was headed their way both his teammates tensed at the blonde's reaction what is it did your scouts run into some trouble Sakura asked something like that Naruto replied the enemy was making a beeline for them I think we should get going the three genin of team 7 blurred through the giant tree roots leaping from tree to tree as they sped through the forest while a bird sat on one of the massive tree roots and watched them pass it sat there chirping as it made little hops its eyes darting this way and that briefly meeting a similar bird farther up in the trees in the wake of the trio the Kusa Kunoichi phased out of the ground followed by her teammates she smirked her long tongue slipping out of her mouth and licking her lips as she eyed her prey coo 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 on the move, are we she asked the empty forest around her eye. Wonder what is you in a hurry, all of a sudden could it be that you're aware that you're being stalked by a predator her teammates rose out of the ground behind her standing on either side of the tall woman together they stared in the direction the genin disappeared in or perhaps my prey means to lure me into a trap she mused aloud and immediately the bird's eyes focused on her oh how amusing this will be more entertaining than I thought had she caught already he was right, that creepy lady was. 
Bad news it seems our prey wants to lead us on a pointless chase clever but not quite good enough the Kusa Kunoichi said you two go and play somewhere else I'll take care of them myself oh boy well if the Kunoichi wasn't going to fall for it it might be a good idea to go for broke and spring what's left of the trap right about now let's see the Kusa Kunoichi said bringing a hand to her face two above and eight searching elsewhere the bird froze, and the Kusa Kunoichi turned her head to look at. It upsetly it noted her eyes were silted like a snake's before the bird could process anything else it burst into smoke I don't like this that Kusa Kunoichi seems like trouble Sasuke thought aloud and why is she coming right for us Naruto frowned and crossed his arms how should I know somehow I doubt it had anything to do with that thing with the kunai you don't think she wants to test herself against an Uchiha like Lee did you Sakura asked looking at Sasuke Sasuke's narrowed eyes were the only indication of how he felt about that who knows, but if she saw through that ambush we should probably stay out of her way Naruto was about to voice his agreement, but his head suddenly jerked and looked off into the distance his teammates turned to him waiting for an explanation he turned back to them open his mouth to speak, but before he could he jerked his head again then in another direction and then again, and yet another his face draining of color Sasuke and Sakura tensed at the blonde shocked expression what Sakura asked what is it what happened Naruto shook his head slowly astonishment and disbelief dancing across his features I, I don't believe it she destroyed them which one Sasuke asked immediately catching on your scouts the ambush all of them Naruto said the memories of his clones demise playing back in his head one after another she got all of them Sakura's face turned to concern while Sasuke's became grim what that's impossible you sent them out and all different directions there's no way Naruto shook his head again no it was her I'm sure of it but how Sakura asked it doesn't matter how Sasuke said snapping the two out of it what matters is that she did it and we're next we've got to a wave of killing intent washed over them the sheer bloodlust was so potent it chilled their blood it set every fiber of their being alight with terror screaming you are going to die at them for an instant they saw themselves being torn apart blood flowing from countless wounds as their bodies were riddled with kunai and just as in their visions they fell to their knees their bodies trembled and refused to respond Sakura was frozen completely her eyes dull and unseeing Sasuke bent forward and threw up and the fear twisted Naruto's stomach so bad he almost joined him he weathered it a bit better since he'd endured it second hand before but it was so much worse in person w what the hell is this I can barely move as she makes Sabuza look like a kitten a quiet slithering sound caught their attention moments before an enormous snake large enough to swallow a man whole crawled up the tree it twisted around the branch toward them before rearing up and lunging at the gen and come on move move naruto managed to snap out of it just in time and a glance showed him his teammates had two they all jumped away sasuke launching six shuriken at the serpent that pierced its head as they landed on three separate branches the snake let out a loud hiss before it fell over and lay still any hopes that it was over were dashed as the snake scales shifted as the Kusa Kunoichi emerged uncaring that she was covered in the snake's body fluids my aren't you the clever ones and it seems you were preparing to run what good instincts unfortunately it seems you've been cornered Sasuke grimaced as he tightly gripped a Kanaya's eyes shifting to crimson I take it you're not after our scroll cuckoo coo how right you are the Kusa Kunoichi answered Clearly amused at the genin's dread Naruto glanced at his teammate Sasuke seemed to have recovered Sakura was trembling but stopped after taking a deep breath at that moment the Kusa Kunoichi burst from the serpent snaking up the tree like a serpent herself quick as a blur she slithered along the branches until she reached Sasuke's tree and closed in on him Naruto immediately formed a cross-shaped seal as he moved into action four clones appeared around him as he leaped across the gap all five threw a volley of kunai as Sasuke kicked back to the base of the branch he was on putting some distance between him and his foe as he added his own kunai into the mix the serpentine kunoichi merely weaved around them as she continued on her way she rose up when she reached him like a snake preparing to strike and slammed into the branch with enough force to kick up a cloud of dirt and debris Sasuke he and Sakura yelled as the blonde landed on the branch only for the dust to clear to reveal a broken log covered in explosive tags the Kusa Kunoichi vanished in the explosion but past experience with her told Naruto no way had that gotten her as clones rushed the cloud as sure enough she emerged and skate she casually weaved around as clones attempts to strike at him dispelling each with a well-placed counter a knee to the stomach and elbow to the back as clones were destroyed one by one until five seconds later they were nothing but smoke she turned to him but it was at that time Sasuke landed beside Naruto and both ready Jutsu wind style, 
Gail Palm Naruto clapped his hands and unleashed a blast of wind Sasuke used his signature fireball jutsu the attacks combined into a massive wall of fire that completely consumed the branch the two genins stared at the conflagration as it began to fade to reveal nothing just a ruined tree the branch the pair stood on was just barely hanging on the two tensed as they felt a presence behind them Naruto didn't have enough time to turn before a leg slammed into him and sent him flying crashing into another branch with a cry of pain sending fissures through the bark Sasuke jumped back and through shuriken that were effortlessly avoided as Naruto got back up and made another cross-shaped hand seal four clones burst into existence and charged at the serpentine kunoichi who easily dodged their strikes and took them out one by one Sasuke had another jutsu ready by the time half of the clones were defeated Naruto recognized it as fire style Running fire the Uchiha breathed out a stream of flame that formed a circle around Orochimaru and the remaining clones cutting them off from sight Naruto jumped into the air and saw their foe had vanished from the ring already the Kusa Kunoichi rose out of the branch behind Sakura the pink haired girl had until then been too freaked out to move but the imminent threat snapped her out of it and she immediately leaped away her eyes wide with terror Sasuke appeared in the air in front of the tall Kunoichi in a blur of motion he aimed a roundhouse kick at her head only for her to catch it with her forearm the Uchiha twisted his body and made to punch her in the face only for the Kunoichi to block it she rotated her arms to spin him in the air before kicking him in the chest sending him sailing through the air where Sakura caught him Naruto jumped into action shooting off from his place and over the Kusa Kunoichi, throwing down four kunai that she easily dodged. As he landed in front of Sakura and Sasuke wind style. Divine Wind Naruto called out as he made the ram seal unleashing a wave of wind that formed several small tornadoes the Kusa Kunoichi smirked casually walking through them but it was then that her attention was drawn to the ground to the kunai Naruto had thrown and the seals wrapped around them the seals that contained Sasuke's fireball jutsu they erupted into balls of fire that combined with the gusts of wind to create a massive tornado of flame as the three genin leaped away do you think we can get away sakura asked as they looked back with how she caught us before not a chance naruto replied through grit teeth the kusa kunoichi was once more moving in serpentine form snaking her way across the tree limbs as she chased after them they only caught a brief glimpse of her slithering form as it blurred past them and vanished into the foliage even with the sharingan sasuke couldn't follow the movements of the strange kunoichi hunting them despite that he had a good idea of where she would appear next at the next branch he leaped higher than his team and ran through hand seals just as he expected she emerged from beneath the branch ahead of them as he molded chakra in his chest fire style phoenix flower jutsu he peppered their foe with small fireballs as his teammates landed and bolted in opposite directions both drew shuriken and threw them at the tall kunoichi but she dodged all the attacks with small steps or casual tilts of her body she watched as Sasuke sailed over her head and landed immediately spinning on his heel and running at the Kusa Kunoichi he channeled chakra to his legs blurring as he moved as fast as he could to try and bridge the gap between them all for nothing a jab aimed at the tall Kunoichi's torso was brushed aside the momentum was turned into a sweeping kick that was easily avoided by bending backward Sasuke launched himself at her kunai poised to plunge into her chest only for her to catch it and strike the Uchiha air in his solar plexus as he reeled back Naruto came at her with a flying kick that was ducked under he charged at her Naruto Sakura yelled knowing what she had in mind the blonde leaped into the air as she let loose a volley of Sinban from behind him having used his body to cover her movements their assailant bent backward almost unnaturally and watched as they sailed over her head mm, dripping with poison my what a promising bunch you are she said as she righted herself and prepared to meet Naruto as he came down but her eyes widened when four yellow chains grew from his back twisting in the air and shooting towards her she leaped back as they slammed into the branch with enough force to kick up a cloud of dirt before carving a path through the wood toward her closing the gap in an instant they rose up and entangled her as Sasuke righted himself and threw a series of kanai at her chest hitting home for a moment he felt a brief moment of hope before it was dashed as she melted away into mud my my it's been a long time since I last laid eyes on those chains they heard her speak as she emerged from the base of the branch how nostalgic but I guess I shouldn't be surprised you were her son what this Kunoichi knew Naruto's mother how the hairs stood up on the back of Sasuke's neck as he gave Naruto a brief glance noting his shocked look and then looked back to their foe who are you Sasuke asked lowly as his eyes narrowed his whole body 
tense and ready to spring into action at any moment you're no gin and you're probably not even from kusa kuku ku well if you want to know so badly entertain me i might deign to tell you the kunoichi replied no surprise all things considered the unknown kunoichi skill the familiarity with naruto's mother the way she was targeting them but why was she the uchiha's power it had to be she was after him it was because of him that naruto and sakura were in this mess he grit his teeth as that thought hit him anger and frustration building at the realization it was blatantly apparent they had little chance against their opponent she was probably on Zabusa or Kakashi's level if not higher he clenched his eyes shut he couldn't do anything just like he was powerless to save his family all those years ago Noah's eyes shot open and the world changed at first he couldn't quite place what was different then as he charged toward their foe he got his answer this is before the Kusakunoichi could even move he saw a shadow of her form blur into motion and she followed seconds after he threw a punch and he saw her block and how she would counter when she brought her knee up he tilted back to dodge he used the momentum to spin and lash out with his arm he saw her block and timed the kick she evaded it but not by the same margin I can see he kicked back and threw kunai only for her to dodge but before she could follow up Naruto jumped high and came down in an axe kick she blocked but the chains erupted and moved to impale her forcing her to throw the blonde back and jump backward Sasuke shot forward seeing Sakura join him as a single chain burst from Naruto's back spearing the branch behind them and reeling him away as they met their foe the chains shot ahead from either side covering them as they closed the distance he couldn't see it but his eyes now each sported three Tomo Sakura's eyes widened as Sasuke shot forward she could tell instantly his movements had changed he was reading and dodging their opponent's moves far better before Naruto was next to join the fray summoning five clones to his side and charging an image of that fateful battle on the bridge flashed into her mind as she watched them fight seeing Naruto and Sasuke within the dome of ice mirrors before the fog became too thick unable to do anything even if she wasn't guarding Tazuna. Just like then her teammates were fighting with everything they had and here she was too afraid to do more than throw the occasional sunbon just watching them fight, again dead weight, again no not again never she forced down the fear in her heart and steeled herself before leaping into the air jumping to a nearby tree before launching herself at the enemy she channeled chakra into her leg, building and maintaining it as best she could as she flipped and raised her leg high she unleashed all the power she could muster as the serpentine kunoichi blocked her attack with her forearm the tall woman's eyes widened as the force of the blow sent out a shockwave the bark splintering beneath her feet but her gaze soon shifted to amusement my that's some chakra control you have she said as she swept her leg to the side before she could retaliate however a chain wrapped around sakura's waist and pulled her back the kunoichi took a step forward before looking down and noticing sakura had dropped some poison bombs during her attack she was soon engulfed in a purple cloud think that did anything Sakura asked I doubt it nothing's worked so far Sasuke said grimly I'm not sure we can take her Naruto admitted smiling humorlessly but it's not like we have a choice besides running's not my style anyway Sakura took a deep breath and drew Sanban needles between her fingers whatever happens I'm with you I'm not going to sit back and watch you two fight again the blonde looked at her and smiled genuinely yeah we're in this together he said getting a nod from a smirking Sasuke how touching the snake user said as she rose from the ground behind them very well if you've managed to gather your wits together show me what you can really do you ask for it and with that team 7 charged Sasuke took the front supported by Naruto's clones the Uchiha took advantage of his newfound abilities avoiding their foes attacks and trying to keep her attention Sakura came at her with heavy blows fueled by her precise control of chakra the real Naruto ducked in and out of battle attacking from every direction with the chains as Sasuke ducked and weaved around all of the snake user's attacks Sakura jumped back when the snake user lashed out with a kick Naruto leaped into the air and came at their foe with a roundhouse kick as two of his clones vanished in clouds of smoke the chains burst from his back as the snake user crouched down and let it sail over her head forcing her back as they slammed into the bark where she stood Sakura took advantage of the debris cloud and threw a volley of poison covered Sanban from behind it the long haired woman simply brushed them aside with her arm as she prepared another volley Naruto unleashed his chains and Sasuke jumped high and unleashed another phoenix flower jutsu they assailed the woman with a combination of fireballs poison needles and stabbing and sweeping chains once more she took on a more serpentine form and snaked through the assault closing the distance between them in an instant and rearing up to 
Attack the pair leaped back to dodge and she saw Naruto make a hand seal as they flew the snake user bent backward as a hail of kunai erupted from the ground flying straight up into the air on Naruto had placed one of his seals there Sasuke reappeared behind her he aimed a sweeping kick at her waist but she shot into the air flipping over his head she vanished in a burst of speed the moment she landed the genin gathered together standing back to back as they heard her traveling through the Foliage leaves raining down to the forest below Sasuke's eyes followed her every move as he ran through hand signs he turned and unleashed a stream of fire at the exact moment their foe turned to face them Naruto took that opportunity to send his chains into the bark beneath them she could see fissures spreading as they tore their way towards the wall of fire before them a similar fissure cleared the wall of flame it seemed that tall Kunoichi had avoided the fire by diving beneath the wood too. Lucky them Sasuke readied shuriken as they all knew what would come next sure enough the woman burst from the ground to avoid the sharp tips of the chain Sasuke threw a shuriken the moment she appeared they sailed past the woman but the way her eyes followed their trail showed she realized the danger too late Sasuke pulled on the nearly invisible wires and snaring the woman Sakura had started her charge the moment the shuriken flew she slammed her fist into the serpentine Kunoichi's chest and Sending her flying fracturing bark when she slammed into the base of the tree with a grunt perfectly placed for when Naruto's chains burst from the ground impaling her through her torso for a few moments all was quiet the genin watched waiting hopeful that it was over their hopes were dashed as she once again melted into mudwell that was quite entertaining a familiar voice rang out above them but I think I've seen enough they looked up and briefly saw the woman before she launched herself at. Then they leaped in different directions as she crashed into the branch where they'd stood making a dust cloud Naruto's chains burst from his back but the curtain of dirt and debris was cleared by a massive burst of wind. One that sent Sakura and Sasuke flying when it wasn't even aimed at them Naruto who it was aimed at was driven clear through four of the massive branches he crashed into the fifth one coughed up blood and began to fall through the air with a sadistic grin the woman ran a blood covered finger over a tattoo on her arm a massive snake several times thicker than the roots of the trees that dominated this forest shot out of the cloud with a speed that belied its size it grasped Naruto in its mouth and vanishing from sight in just a few seconds Naruto Sakura and Sasuke cried out oh don't worry I'm sure that one will manage to survive their assailant replied raising a hand to her forehead protector I can't have you fail this stage of the exam but I think my subordinates would have trouble if you were here when they arrive and I can't have it she said her voice changing an oily male voice had replaced the feminine one for moments before she took her hand away from her forehead protector to reveal a musical note Odo and she said subordinates as he had jounin of their village Sakura thought as she and Sasuke prepared to attack now now enough of that he said before making a one-handed seal and instantly all the strength left her body her arms and legs felt like lead weights as she fell to her knees struggling to even keep her head up as much as she tried her body refused to respond a glance at Sasuke revealed he was in a similar state and quickly her mind made the connection paralysis jutsu he'd taken them down with a deer rank technique the disguised man turned to Sasuke eyeing him like a snake in specks of fat and corn mouse I can sense a great deal of potential in you truly you are his brother brother Sasuke had a brother any further thought was Cut off as that seemed to touch a nerve on Sasuke who the hell are you coo 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 the man chuckled before he reached for his face's fingers digging into the skin just beneath his forehead protector and then he peeled it off ripping what appeared to be flesh from his face like it was just a mask to reveal chalk white skin the man had strange purple markings around golden eyes with the same slit pupils they'd occasionally seen through his disguise he had pronounced cheekbones and when his mouth Opened it revealed fawn-like teeth, but far more concerning than his sinister appearance was what he said my name is Orochimaru and instantly all the fear Sakura had forced down came flooding back Orochimaru we've been fighting Orochimaru if you want to see me again then you'll have to defeat my men and pass this stage he continued raising his hand to reveal their heaven scroll when did he and then it burst into purple flame before their eyes Orochimaru gave a wicked grin as he made a hand. Seal his head shot forward his neck stretching out as he reached for Sasuke and sunk his fangs into the Uchiha just above the shoulder and suddenly the force holding them was released Sakura rushed over to Sasuke as quickly as she could as the Uchiha fell to his knees grasping at the bite mark as she tried to support him she saw a seal of some kind form on his neck. One that resembled the tonal marks in his eyes my gift should give you a taste of power seek me out if you want more she looked. 
back and found the snake summoner was gone leaving her alone with Sasuke who was almost screaming from whatever pain was coursing through him Sasuke Sasuke talk to me Sakura cried desperately this this pain the Uchiha managed to gasp as he grabbed onto Sakura his fingers digging into her skin painfully but she paid it no mind she looked at the struggling boy and then to the trail of destruction left by the snake Naruto I have to help him but I can't leave Sasuke like this what do I do Naruto? slowly began to regain his senses everything had been a blur in the wake of that last wind attack he was only barely aware of his surroundings slowly however things began to come into focus and his eyes shot open as he realized what happened chains burst from the snake's underbelly it reared its head up and let out a roar as it reared up before it fell onto its side and lay still draped over the massive branches naruto shot out of the hole in its gut end Landed on his feet covered in fluids ugh sick did she try to feed me to one of her snakes he yelled as he looked at his arms it was then that he noticed. He was in an entirely different area of the forest he hadn't even been out for a minute how fast had that thing been moving Sakura Sasuke he turned back in the direction the snake had come from the trail of torn branches before him seemed to have no end in sight he gritted his teeth and with thoughts of his teammates dominating his mind he took off he didn't get far before a massive shape burst from the canopy beside him he had just enough time to jump as another enormous snake shot towards him another one his face twisting in anger his back began to glow as his chains prepared to burst forth while the serpent turned around and lunged once again it was then that another hissing roar reached his ears he looked down to see another one rising to meet him its maw opened wide to swallow him and the branch he landed on he leaped towards the closest branch a moment before the snake tore through where he once stood while the other snake reared up and prepared to come down on him it never had the chance at that moment a blur came down from above with a cry of takigakir hurricane it smashed into the serpent's head driving it down below the branch before it reared up with a pained cry with that one preoccupied naruto turned to the remaining snake as it came at him once again reaching into his punch and channeling chakra into a seal in its lining he drew a fuma shuriken and a puff of smoke and threw it at the snake before clapping his hands together wind style. Gale palm the resulting wall of wind propelled the large shuriken forward tearing right through the snake's head it let out a cry before it fell limp he turned his head to the other snake as a cry of exhilaration reached it the snake was thrashing trying to dislodge its attacker before it slammed its head into a branch this was a mistake as the figure leaped off at the last second before darting back down and slamming back into the snake's head this time the creature hissed before falling limp a trail of blood revealing that the newcomer had driven a kunai into its head its head crashed down a nearby branch naruto got a good look at the newcomer for the first time as she stood she was a petite girl who stood slightly shorter than he was she had tan skin and choppy layered mint green hair that stopped just past her shoulders she wore her forehead protector like an armband it was marked with a downward arrow symbol the sign of Takigakir she seemed to love white as much as he did orange as she wore a short white skirt a white sleeveless shirt and bandages around her upper thighs and her chest that left her midriff bare even her sandals were white and oh hey speaking of orange her eyes were poopyless orange orbs that matched a hair clip she had on her right side Naruto kinda wished his eyes were orange the girl immediately began to spin and do a victory dance only for it to be cut short when the snake burst into smoke oh why didn't the others do that maybe it was still alive she landed on her feet and tensed her eyes searching their surroundings oh she must not have realized it was a summon she relaxed when it became clear they weren't about to come under attack and looked to him with a bright smile before running towards him hi there she said with a wave before stopping a foot away from him her hands on her hips i thought you could use a hand with those snakes the more the merrier right the green haired girl said and then she recognized the boy she'd helped and gasped wait are you naruto uzumaki and who are you naruto snapped back tense ready for a fight oh boy well the blonde had just gotten out of a fight if those snake summons meant anything sorry she held up her hands in a placating gesture i'm fu and i was hoping i'd run into you you were looking for me he asked she nodded i wanted to talk i was Hoping we could be friends Fu answered and he seemed to calm a bit I've wanted to meet you ever since you called everyone out back when we were waiting for the first test to start I wanted to do that well I wanted to see if any of them would be my friends but still anyway my team held me back. They said that my village chief wouldn't be happy if I caused a scene she said her voice gaining confidence and then during the 10th question I was so scared I'd have to go back to our chief and tell. Him I'd be an eternal genin I mean I wasn't going to laugh at stop him but still but then I shout out Fadio or and scared and whoa 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 Naruto stopped her before rubbing the back of his head look I'm sorry I'm just a little on edge you know I mean can you blame me the last two women I met through pointy stuff at me and tried to feed me to a snake he said with a slight chuckle ah uh, that's why he was covered in snake slime nasty still they shared a laugh at that so friends fo asked hopefully holding 
Her hand out Naruto smiled and took it yeah you seem like a lot of fun he said yes he actually said yes he was the first person ever to say yes Fu's expression became ecstatic she jumped into the air raising a fist in triumph as she cheered the day had started off on a sour note when her team kept her from announcing herself before the test started playing the shibuki card that was low but it had just gotten better and better. Since her team split up first she had a few hours to explore this. Creepy awesome forest to her heart's content then she managed to get the scroll her team needed to pass and now she'd met the boy who seemed to like to make noise as much as she did and he even agreed to be friends listen it was nice meeting you Fu but I need to get back to my team Naruto told her Fu was a bit disappointed but she understood night would fall before long and even she knew being out here by yourself at night was a bad idea she nodded with a smile yeah I get you I'm supposed to. Meet up with my team too guess I'll see you at the tower then Naruto grinned you can count on it and then he turned and leaped through the trees she waved after him with a bright smile goodbye good luck don't let any more snakes get you see you later she heard him call back as he vanished into the foliage she was left smiling her hands balled into eager fists in front of her chest as she stared after the blonde she'd been here two days and she'd already almost doubled the number of friends she had she was well on her way to a hundred Sakura looked up at the night sky a few hours had passed since their disastrous fight with one of the greatest traitors in the history of Kanoa she had to suppress a shiver when she remembered that they'd been fighting one of the legendary students of the third Okage she sighed as she looked out at the seemingly empty clearing she'd just finished setting up the last trap she may have gone overboard, but given the situation she'd rather be safe than. Sorry satisfied with her handiwork she walked over to the cluster of roots there at the Korle Sasuke he had thankfully lost consciousness after a few minutes of what seemed to be agony it wasn't even close to a peaceful rest though his face was twisted in a grimace he was burning up and shuddered every once in a while before calming down she looked out to the forest worried about Naruto, but she couldn't leave Sasuke like this he'd be easy prey for predators not to mention the other teams and the subordinates Orochimaru mentioned and she couldn't exactly take him with her all she could do was hope he improved. 